Welcome back artists, I'm Wyatt Paints, and today I've got a classic action movie inspired video for you. I'm painting a shoulder mounted plasma cannon from Predator as the first of my two Predator videos. Also, this is an extra special video because I'm filming it on my birthday. Shout out to all the Leos watching. Now, can't get good news without a little bad news. And unfortunately, that bad news is I've got jury duty starting on Monday. So next week's video might be a little delayed, but I'll do my best to get it out as fast as possible. But for now, time is wasting. I'm going to head over to my spray booth. Let's get started. Now, since this cannon will be metallic, I needed to start with a proper primer. And in this case, it's a gloss black primer from Rust-Oleum. The gloss finish here will give me an extra smooth surface to put my metallics on, which will lend to a much better final overall look. As for brand, personally, I've leaned on Rust-Oleum Rattle Cam primers for the last few years. And I gotta say, I've been happy with the results. They go on smooth and are relatively cheap compared to primers put out by Citadel or Tamiya. And personally, I pass on primers from Army Painter because every can I've used have given me poor results. Another bonus for Rust-Oleum is the large range of colors that they're available in. So if you're looking to save some time and prime in the color of your base coat, they've got you covered. There is one word of caution when using a spray primer on your 3D prints though, and this applies to any brand. Make sure your prints are well cleaned of any residue from printing, as it will react to the accelerant in the paint and prevent it from drying correctly. As an extra precaution, I double wash my parts and give them an extra day of drying after cleaning before I prime to ensure a good application. After each part was primed, I hung them up to dry for a full 24 hours in a well ventilated room before I touched them. The last thing you want to do is touch it while it's still wet because you'll leave a big nasty fingerprint and the only way to fix it would be to strip it and start all over. So be patient. After a day, I was ready to lay down my base metallic. And for that, I chose white gold from the liquid silver line. Now this stuff is an alcohol based paint, so a bit more care is needed compared to using acrylics. First, while I recommend wearing a mask whenever airbrushing, as breathing in particulate is never good for your lungs. When I sprayed this stuff, I put on my resin respirator, because not only is this aerosolizing alcohol, but also a lot of metal flakes, and you do not want that in your lungs. So if you're doing this indoors, keep safety as your top concern and make sure there are no pets or kids around and have tons of ventilation. Now, when it comes to application, I turned down my PSI to about 17, as this stuff is pretty thin, so you won't need much power behind it. Also, it's important to keep your coats as thin as you can and slowly build up the color. If you go too fast, you'll get a splotchy finish and it won't look good. One way I help keep them thin is to spray from a little further away than I usually do. This way I'm giving the part more of a misting. Granted, this might take four or five passes to get the coverage I want, but since this is an alcohol-based paint and it's going on really thin, the layers will dry very fast. While I wait for those metallics to dry, Now's a good time to thank my subscribers over on Patreon. Every month, your continued support reminds me that people really enjoy the content that I'm putting out. Thank you. If you would like to become a part of the Painting Pantheon, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Now enough dilly-dallying. That cannon looks plenty dry. Let's get back to work. Now, my client wanted me to add a good heat patina to this cannon to show that it's been in heavy use. To start this off, I grabbed another metallic, Glorious Gold. Typically, the first color in an annealing process is a yellow, and I found gold or bronze works best for this, as the metallic adds a bit of depth to it that you just don't get from a shade or ink. Now, for heat burn-in, I didn't want to go overboard with it, as it can be a bit too much, so I started about an inch, inch and a half from the end of the barrel. Again, I kept this paint nice and light. I want the color to slowly reveal itself gradually so that I get a nice subtle shift to it. I made sure to paint towards the end of the barrel. This not only lets me control where this patina starts, but also it ensures that a majority of the pigments end up towards the end of the barrel as it should have the most burn in. The 
The next color for this effect is Daruchi Violet. Now, one thing to make sure here is to not completely cover the gold from the previous step. So I made sure to leave a good half inch of the gold that was left clean while using the same spray angle technique to control and maintain the color line. It's important to keep that line consistent for the metal burn to look natural. Here, I'm also again letting the color build up towards the end of the barrel, as it will become the base for the final burn color, which will be a simple blue shade. Like with the violet, it's important to leave a band of the previous color showing so that it creates a consistent tone shift from the silver to gold to violet and finally blue. Now because of the deep violet base, a portion of this will go so dark that it'll look black. And that's okay, because it'll look a lot like accumulated soot and add to the overall weathering. Seeing as this is the final color in the patina, it shouldn't take too long to apply. If you find yourself taking a substantial amount of time with this step, check to make sure that you're not overdoing it. For me, about here is where I felt it was done. One quick clear coat, and this cannon was ready for final assembly. And here she is. Ain't she a beauty? While this prop isn't as complicated as some of the models I've done, I got to feature an effect that's usually reserved as an added element of weathering. Honestly, I quite enjoyed having it as the main focus and really letting the burn metal take center stage. If you enjoyed this video or learned something you could use to help your painting journey, please don't hesitate to hit that sub button. I'm closing in on 350 subs and I can't make it without your help. And since YouTube Analytics tells me about 75% of my viewers are not subscribed, I know this community has the legs and room to grow. I'll keep doing my part putting out these videos. It's up to you to do your parts and click that button. Also, stay tuned for my second Predator video where I'll be painting a half scale biomask and stand. And to all my Kingdom Death fans, I took the suggestion from the Adnus video and I'm working on the Gambler next, so look out for that as well. Finally, as always, thank you for watching, stay creative, and enjoy the process.